Okay. Okay. Hi, Mr. Stewart. So we're going to go from our warm up and movement assessment into our main exercises. So the first one we're going to do is the kettlebell box squat or bench squat, as you can see here. So the first thing you're going to do is get yourself in the middle of the bench. Okay. Feet sh shoulder width apart and whatnot. And also, if you don't have access to a kettlebell, a dumbbell is perfectly fine as well. So what I'm going to do is pick it up as such, make sure your back is really straight. You can obviously start with the bell just here at the side, then bring it across totally fine, wherever is easier for you. Then from here, again, what you want to have is your feet slightly forward, but not ex exaggerated or way, way behind. Just somewhere so it's not at 99 degrees, just a little bit forward. Then going from here, putting the bell to your chest, shoulders back, looking up. Don't obviously arch your back or anything. Just keep your eyes looking forward and you're going to stand up as such, flexing the glutes through, back down and back up. Again, three sets of 15 reps as such. What I don't want to see is, if I put the weight down, what I don't want to see is obviously you trying to scoop your hips up to do it or pushing out with your knees. It's very much using your hips to stand up. Getting your knees there just to fix from the ground back up, all the way down as such. And what I don't want to see is as you're coming the way down, just dropping or collapsing. Okay? okay. Then whenever you're finished with the weight as such, after you sit back down the bench, just put it down as such here. Keep a nice neutral spine or you can just put it down on your side. Totally okay. Now before we go any further with it, obviously Fem would be monitoring your blood glucose level and obviously through the warm assessment was fine. How are you now? Yep. Is it all good? Yes, still good? Yep. Perfect, right. So we're going to go ahead, crack on this here. So once you do a few reps, I'll then monitor, let's assess your movement, then we can sort of see where any technical changes need to take place. So again, feet shoulders apart, push the knees out, good. Toes slightly pointed out, chest up, shoulders back, looking forward, and stand up when you're ready. Good. Nice and strong, really good, slow and controlled, back up. Again, just sitting back on the bench and stopping there, and then back up, good. Just as if you're getting up and down from the, the toilet seat, really good, really good movement. Back up again, great. Any pain at all anywhere? No. Good, probably did you always keep looking forward when you do it? Give me a couple more more reps there. Good. Nice one. Two more. And last one and just put the bell on the bench whenever you turn around. Good man. Okay, so the way we would make that harder is we over time we would gradually lower the bench height, improve your range of motion, we either increase the cowbell weight itself, but that generally is the last thing we'll change. We'll obviously increase it. They will decrease your tempo so it slows it down, makes it a little bit harder. We would just do the, the rest times of it or add in more sets and reps, increase the total volume of it. So, very happy with, you happy with the squat there? Yeah. No issues, good. Mm, nice one. So, obviously, in your normal work with Chris today, we're going to be showing you just how you do each exercise properly. Yeah. The, the next exercise you're going to be doing after you do your three sets of 15 reps of this, you'll then take a two minute rest, yeah. then go into your next exercise. Rest time between each set for this one's going to be about a minute to a minute and a half, but you gauge how you feel with that. Are you still sitting around about an RP 10, 11 yeah, now? Good. Uh, yeah. That's fine. So if you didn't stand up, I'll show you the, the next exercise, sir. Okay. So the next exercise, again, you can use the bench, but we're going to try it without first. And then if, if, if we find it's too hard, we'll just go back and use the bench for hence so why it's going to be left out. So the next one is the standing uh, single arm cowbell press. So we're going to introduce you not only to lower body exercise, it's about upper body ones as well. So we're going to go from here, again, have the bell somewhere at the side, it's easy for you to grab. Mm -hmm. Don't have to have it on the ground. So again, feet show with the part, a little bit of bend in your knees, so it makes it easier. Stand up nice and tall, bring the bell up to you, using both arms and hands. Your starting position is going to be either with your non-lifting hand, either on your hip or across your chest, whatever is easier for you. Have the bell resting on the crease of your elbow, stand up and straight looking forward. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to push straight up and through and then back down. See how I'm bringing the bell back down? Just like that there. Okay. And again, doing that for your sets of 15 reps. Again, if it's too hard in terms of weight, we can obviously drop it and whatnot. And when you're done, just switch over each side and go on as such anyway. Okay? okay. And always make sure you're looking forward.
Now, if you do find you're swaying quite a lot after the first few reps, just say, and we'll get you doing it from the actual seated position here, okay? Okay, feet shoulder apart, knees slightly bent, chest up looking forward, rest in there, go ahead. Okay. One more, okay, how are you finding that? It's a bit wobbly. A bit, a bit wobbly, okay, yeah? Yeah. Don't feel like you've got very much control around your mm. core and stuff, okay? So just rest the bell back on the bench. And all I want you to do is in the stance you took for your squats on the bench, if you retake that there again, please. So again, you'll find all these exercises are interlinked, so they're easy enough to remember and learn. So what I want to do is then take the bell back to your starting position for the shoulder press there, single arm. And again, so knees pushed out. And all you're doing is that you're just keeping your chest up when you're pressing up from the start position here. That looks a lot more stronger now, yeah? All okay so far, yeah? Keep looking forward, remember to breathe out on the way down. Good switch over sides. Pushing straight up, full extension overhead, good man. So the reason why we do kettlebell single arm presses, to just, just keep looking forward, is so we can sort of see which side is stronger than the other one. And we can sort of see any imbalances or we need to do more corrective work between the, the two. Good man, when you're done, just put it back down the side. Nice. So obviously we can sort of see the weight maybe a little bit too heavy for doing sets of 15 reps, but we can breezy bring it down to about an 8 kilo, because that, 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 that's 12 right there. Yeah. And obviously we can start our light and so you can progress up to 12, but end the program doing sets of 15, 20 reps. Any questions with that so far? No, that's pretty straightforward. Do you find it easier seating first? Se yeah, seating's better. Okay, so what we can do is we can add in by the end of the program, we can maybe get you back to doing standing, but with a lighter weight at the end once you progress. Okay? Yeah. So the same thing to follow as the previous exercise, take about a minute, minute, 30 seconds rest between sets, then two minutes rest after the exercise before going into the, the next one. Okay? Yeah. So the next one we're going to be doing is kettlebell swings. Okay, I'll show you this here. So again, we'll go from lower body, upper body, back down to lower, then finish with upper body again. So kettlebell swing, it's similar to what we did with the kettlebell squat, mm -hmm. in terms of the muscles involved, but the movement is different. So what we're looking forward to doing is, Again, feet shoulder width apart, slight uh, bend of the knees, rest the bell on your actual thigh. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is you're going to bring the bell out, then you're going to swing around, push the hips through as such. So again, it's a little bit more movement, a little bit faster, but it's going to obviously build up your muscular endurance, your cardiovascular fitness as well. Just another way of doing it with using a weight. So what I don't want to see you do, or the mistake most people commonly make is they try and do cowbell squats, okay. which is a entirely separate exercise, which is they go from here and they go down as such. Right. So that's a squat swing, which in its own right is a good exercise, but just for the purpose of today, we just want to focus on you doing a cowbell swing okay. as such, which is very much just like this here. So very much using your glutes, hips and hamstrings. Again, strengthen that lower back of yours. Okay? okay yeah. Then when you're done, just bring it back down and to pick it up again and such like that. Or just have it on the side, whatever's easier. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Feet shoulder width apart, shoulders back, then knees bent, then just start swimming. There we go, build momentum. If you can't bring the bell a little bit higher. Chest tight, good. Good, and as you bring it down, push your hips back. So you feel a bit more stretch in your hamstrings and glutes. Yeah. Are you feeling that now, your hamstrings and glutes? Yeah. Yeah, good, nice one. So again, don't try and let your arms do work, just lose the actual the strength of your hips and calves, your hips and the glutes to bring it back up. Okay, good, much better. Just think about squeezing those glutes to the top. Good, very nice, strong. Last couple of reps. Two and one more, and back down. Well done. Again, you can see that it brings up the heart rate pretty quick yeah. as well. So, would you say what RP would you now say be? About 11 12. 11 now. 12 pushing, yeah. good. This is where we want to be. So, when we push this, we'll the whole way up, one up, okay? 
Um, if you do find your grip is getting a little bit tired on it, just use some uh, some chalks fine. But don't try and use gloves because obviously the gloves the the idea is the gloves that may portray that they've got more grip, but your hands are probably better. Yeah. Just give them a dry with a towel if they get a bit sweaty, or just use some chalk in our gym. Okay. Yeah. If it if it ends up being too hard, just drop the weight, but still focus on getting your the total reps in. What we're not concerned what we're not concerned about is how much weight you're moving. It's the total amount of movement you're doing. Okay. That, that, that's what's better. It's quality over quantity. Okay, happy with that? Yeah. So again, same thing as before. Take a minute, 30 reps between each set. Then obviously two minutes rest in between the, this and the previous, the next, next exercise. Then we'll go into our last exercise after that. Okay? Yeah. So just come back over. I'll show you the next one. So the next one is our single arm uh, cowbell row. So again, I'm going to be using the bench for this one here. There's a couple ways you can do it. Again, I personally prefer having one leg on the bench, but there's nothing wrong with having both both legs off it as such going down as here. But I personally prefer having one leg on, so you can do it as that way, so you can actually rest a bit in between sets, okay? Yeah. So what I want to do is, we're going to have the handle neutral, Yeah. okay? So it's going to be facing directly up to you. The non-pulling uh, arm is going to have a slight bend in it. Everything's going to be in line, so do you remember the four prone position to yeah. so try and imagine you're going to keep everything in line with each other leg off the bench when we bent I'm going to bring the hand down fully strained out you don't need to be looking way up way down just your head neutral but eyes always looking forward oh, I'm just going here I'm going to row pull through and back down till that touches it nice and controlled for my 15 reps as such Again, in time we can add in other variances or other uh, additions of stimuli. We can change the, the way that you're pulling. Again, moves it a little bit higher up for rowing. Mm -hmm. Or what we can do is we can change the actual position. So as I was saying, I can get myself down really low, almost like, like quarter squatting as such from here and then rowing in as such. Okay? Okay. But for now, just going from here and rowing up as such. You want to keep a nice straight spine. What well, I don't want you to see is trying to pull like this, okay? Or leaning over any other side, pulling straight through. Then when you're done, you just turn around and switch over to the other side. Okay. Happy that? Yeah. Back nice and straight. Have the this leg bent a little bit more and bring it out slightly. There we go. Push that chest up. Good. Then pulling up the weight up to your armpit. Good, nice back down. So as you're lowering it down, just breathe out. Good man, nice. Five more reps. Good. So now you'll feel this in also your upper back, your lats, your biceps pulling but your forearm, your hand, and your actual core muscles as well. Yeah. Okay, good. Then just switch over sides. Just move into position, good. That's it. Okay, and then start when you're ready. Keep my chest nice and, nice and tight up, go. Good. Excellent, bring the whole way down. Make sure you stretch your arm the whole way down, good, nice. That's stop, start position, excellent. Good, five more. And one. Good man, well done. Excellent, I have a rest. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Those are four exercises we've covered. You, so for once you go into your power workout, do them under also my guidance or another instructor. You'll do them for three sets each, 15 reps each. Obviously we'll pick a weight that will Sit them correctly for yourself. A minute and a half rest between each set and two minutes rest between each exercise after that. So what we do is now we're going to do a cool down. We're going to do some stretching and go on the uh, the exercise bike again. Okay? okay. When you go on the exercise bike again, you'll spend five more minutes on it anyway. And again, it's just to lower your heart rate, get yourself back down control. Because you're probably now at RP twelve. Yeah. 13 yeah, again because we don't want to go any, any any higher than that yeah. so you want to still feel we want to feel like moderately tired 
or worked out, knowing that I can say I worked out, but I'm not wrecked. Mm. Okay. So after you've gone on the bike, these are the sort of stretches I want you to be doing. Okay. Yeah. So if you come over here, I'll just demonstrate them for you. So the first one is going to be the quad stretch. So again, just holding the wall. So the the leg that's not on the wall side close to it, so by my right leg, I'm going to have this leg bent. I'm going to grab this one here by my toes. Then from here, all I'm going to do is push it off. There we go. By my toes, and all I'm going to do is just hold there. Now I can really feel stretching that, but to make it feel further, to get a deeper stretch, I can just flex my right foot. And I feel my stretch all down through my hip and quadricep. I just hold that for 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, yep. that's all you need to do. Make sure you got a nice bend here, and obviously to make it easier, you just pick a point in the wall and watch it as such. And once you hold that for 10, 15 seconds, gradually lower it down. And obviously you switch over sides as such. Now, obviously, if you can't get your foot to touch your actual glute, that's fine. Just as far back as you actually can go. Okay. Okay. Again, if it's a bit difficult, you can use a band hook on obviously pull your, your leg back or whatnot mm -hmm. and obviously just keep it try and keep a nice upright position if you don't you do, if you feel the wall isn't helping you can't put your hands on your hip or across your actual chest and whatnot okay okay go ahead there you go good one nice just hold that Maybe now just flex your right glute, push the hip through, feel a bit more of the stretch. Good man. And just nice deep breaths. So this is just part of your cool down stretch. You just want to increase your mobility and flexibility. Okay, so switch over sides. Nice one. Good man. Any pain at all during it? No. Good, good, nice, nice. Few more seconds. And back down rest. Okay. Come back here, I'll show you the next one. So next one you will need is a bench. So again, this is just to stretch out your glutes and hips. So this is the squats we're doing, the swings. And again, this will help benefit you sort of on the, the sitting you do. So this will help undo some of the, the actual tightness in your lower back and hips. So what I'm gonna do is sit sideways on, on the bench, bring your leg up as such. One leg behind the other, and again, just keeping yourself nice and upright. And again, you don't really actually have to move that much. You can really feel that stretching out your lower back, glutes, and hip. And again, just hold that. If you were feeling this is getting a bit too easy, what you would do is then you would just lean forward slightly, and again, you can feel a far deeper stretch on that. Again, 15 second hold, relax. 15 seconds again. So each of these stretches you'll do it three times, 15 seconds each on each side of the body. Okay? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Do you feel that already? Yep. Yeah. Once you set that nice and tall upright, there you go. Good, nice. So try not to like lean into your side. Okay, and if you want to feel it more, just keep it in the back next to you, but just lean forward. Feel it a little more now? Yeah. Yeah, there we go, good. Nice one. Now, if it gets to the point where you're finding yourself, you're leaning really, really far forward just to feel the stretch, what you do is you'd raise the bench higher. And obviously that will save you from leaning forward, then you almost have to start back again at neutral the higher level angle mm -hmm. of hip. Okay, and just switch over sides. Good man. You probably find one side's tighter than the other. Yeah, you definitely can't go as far. That one compared to the other one. <laughs> but any pain at all or no? No pain. Good, good, good. How's the RPE now? About nine ten now? Yeah, it's come down quite a bit. Come down, good, good, nice. Five more seconds. Okay, next one, good. Come on. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is just one for your shoulders from the shoulder press we're doing. So again, all you're going to do is, again, feet shoulder apart, stand up nice and straight, 
we're going to do it for each side. So we're going to take one arm out across the chest and uh, ahead of the elbow, so not behind. All I'm going to do is I'm going to keep not quite locked out, just a small bend in it. Then I'm going to bring it across the chest and I'm just going to pull with my forearm. Just pull a tiny bit of pressure across, looking forward. I'm going to feel stretch across my deltoid, across the shoulder muscle all here. And I'm just looking just to hold that for 15 seconds again. Okay? Yep. Then whenever you're done, switch over sides. So make sure you keep a nice straight back doing it. Don't try and like hunch over. Keep a nice good posture the whole way. Okay? Okay, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Good man. And also, if we've got feeling up, just apply a bit more pressure. Pulling through. You feel a little more now? Yeah. Yeah, good. Nice one. Okay, nice deep breaths in and out. Bring the RP and your, your, your the heart rate right back down. Just do it for 15 seconds, switch over. Side to yeah, good man. Get any pain at all during it? No. no. Good, good. Next one, just back's really straight, good. Makes it easier, knees bent a little bit. Good man. Five more seconds. Two and one and rest. Okay, so then you repeat that two to two more times each side. Then we're going to our last one. Okay, this yep. is for the upper back. So if you okay. head over, so again you will need the bench for this one. Again, things are this is a great stretch. Stretch out your upper back. So all I want you to do is get yourself down into position. Again, make sure there's plenty of room. So from here, just move the bench in the correct position. All I'm looking to do is from here. Is I'm going to put my elbows on the actual bench yep. and I'm going to stretch out my upper back. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go down from here, elbows out stretched, and then literally all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lean my body weight in. And I don't even have to go that far. I'm going to feel a nice stretch through my upper back. The idea is try and keep the elbows straight, don't let them come in. Mm -hmm. As soon as you feel them coming in, just hold that position. And again, this is just going to stretch out that whole upper back of yours. Okay, then when you're done, just come back up, rest, then come back down into it again. Okay? Yep. 15 seconds. Good. Good. Right. Good. Again, make sure there's enough space between you and the bench. Again, put your elbows on them. Okay. And then all you're doing is just lean your body weight away from you, just to stretch it. Now hold it there. Do you feel that all the way through your, your, your sides and your upper back and lats? Yeah. Good man, just hold there. Any pain at all? No. Good. How, how, how does it feel? Nice? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> Five more seconds, then just come, come back up. Good man, stand up. So again, for that, there are your four stretches for each of those exercises we've just done in our workout today, Mr. Stewart. And what we'll do is now is, um, we'll just go through a couple of event questions regarding the workout we just had, okay? okay yeah.